we're immunizing a lot of kids against a disease called uh, meningococcal, mm -hmm. and it actually causes meningitis in some kids. Right. Is that true? Um, it can cause some uh, some symptoms and some headache and some and, and a lot of the symptoms of meningitis, uh, but it's it's rare and the most people believe that the benefits outweigh the risks of the of the um, vaccination, especially in high risk children such as people dorming in colleges and things like that. Well, in New York State, they're immunizing all kids that go to camp over eleven, right. and they want all college freshmen, especially living in dorms, to get it today. Sure. That's, that seems seem to be pretty safe, pretty effective mm -hmm. against the common strains. Right. But if, how would you know a kid had it? And, and, and the story is it could spread so quickly and kill very quickly. What right. would be the signs that you would look at if someone called up the doctor and said, oh, we're really worried about the kid? What would be those signs? So if they're having you know severe headaches or any sort of other neurological impairments, they're not able to walk properly or talk properly, um, sometimes they're not they're, they're not seeing well, and then a lot of times they'll develop a certain rash, which can help also help us uh, with the diagnosis. The rash is like little black dots in the body. Yeah, sure. Or black and blue marks. Mm -hmm. And this is a very devastating disease because sometimes you survive, it can right. de destroy your arms, your legs. It actually can get amputated. So it's yeah. not a benign disease. Right? No, it can be, and that's why the sooner you get the treatment, the better, because it's can, you know certain types, especially if they're caused by certain bacteria, they can be treated very well. But this vaccine is worth getting because of how terrible this disease is. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, some parents are afraid of giving the vaccine, but it seems to be one of the safer ones going. Yeah, a lot of parents are afraid of you know any injection or anything you put in, and that's understandable. Um, but again, this is one of the ones that have been, you know, a lot of that, that have been tested and have been used extensively and has been shown to be safe. Well, a couple of years ago, there was some concern that there was a complication from the vaccine called guillain barre syndrome, mm -hmm. and it seemed that if they checked it, the number of cases involved right. probably was an increase, but they had to get the vaccine. And what's this term guillain barre mean? Right, so guillain barre is a disorder of the peripheral nerves, so basically that means the nerves that come out of your spinal cord and go to your muscles uh, and, to the, and to the rest of your body. And you, the, the muscles are basically like electrical wires and they have insulation around them that helps them transmit the electrical current through them. And in Guillain-Barre, you could, your, your body actually, it's an autoimmune process where you actually start attacking the, the, uh, the insulation around the, uh, the myelin, around the nerves, and that can slow transmission and make you have uh, weakness in your muscles, and then more seriously, weakness of the the uh, breathing muscles, and and that's why you need to be in the hospital to be care. You know, if you did have that disorder, it comes it's mild, but it can it can be devastating. So yeah, it, even though it starts out mild, it can uh, progress very rapidly, where the person may not be able to breathe from from weakness breathe from weakness of the muscles, and that's why they need to be uh, monitored very carefully. It starts from the outside in or inside out. Well, with Guillain-Barre, uh, we often see it starting, you know, with the legs and then and then working its way up. So it starts away sure. to the center point. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a flu-type vaccine, swine flu, and there were a bunch of cases that followed it too. So it can right. be caused from sometimes another thing called vaccines. But the most common reason, I think, is sometimes they go to a dentist or something. They get an injection, and that could be the trigger. Is that true? Um you know, some people believe that, again, you have to understand that uh, Guillain-Barre, or otherwise known as um, Guillain-Barre, is, uh, is not very common. And a lot of times when it does happen, we try to find associations with it. There are some specific associations, like uh, a certain uh, infections that you can get that, that can trigger it. But uh, a lot of the others, it's unclear at this point. You know, such as the vaccines and, 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 and injection, other types of injections, whether they really cause that or not. Well, most of them, it, it goes away on its own, is it true? Yes. It should re you know, sometimes it gets worse for a few days, but then it should start getting better on its own. And generally, it, 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 it really leaves a permanent sequela, is that true? Correct. You know, sometimes it can leave mild uh, sequela. Rarely it will leave more serious sequela, but usually it's, it's very benign.